Hello everyone and welcome. This is Matt from Indefensive Plants and today we are checking out a very unique type of prairie called a hill prairie. Before we see any species, however, we gotta do a quick geology lesson. Come on. The reason this place exists all has to do with our recent glacial past. As the ice sheets retreated, they deposited huge masses of rock, silt, and sand. And this is one of them. We're sitting atop a huge unconsolidated mass of really drought prone soils. And the type of plants that establish here have to be able to deal with those conditions. So that's why this is a, such a unique little spot to check out and we're gonna see some really cool species as a result. Let's go look for some now. Now here's a species near and dear to my heart, the cylindrical blazing star. I did my master's work on this species, trying to figure out why it's so conservative about its habitat needs. It's not terribly common, although you can find it in abundance in the right type of habitat. It tends to be associated with calcium filled soils. So this glacial outwash is probably full of limestone and other types of calcareous rocks. Perfect habitat for this. It's not a good competitor. It does not do well with other aggressive species, which is why it's thriving in a site like this, where it's too dry for other types of vegetation to really come in and overcrowd it. I adore this plant and it's very different than most of the blazing stars if you're used to seeing them with flowers all the way up the spike. Instead it just gets these clusters of their composite flowers right at the tips of the branches. It's just so wonderful and really nice to see it again after so many years. Let's go look at another plant associated with this back up here. Meet the prairie dock. And it's not so much what's going up here that's interesting, it's the fact that a majority of the plant is actually down below. Look at these giant leaves, they are so rough, it's like touching sandpaper. If I was a rabbit, I wouldn't really want to eat this plant. And indeed, it's not heavily browsed upon anywhere it grows. Deep underneath the soil is about a 12 to 15 foot taproot. It is really good at finding water and really great at living in these drought prone habitats. Now the reason these leaves are sitting in a vertical stance is so that they can catch incoming east to west light, but still minimize the amount of light hitting vertical surface areas, which helps reduce the temperature of the leaf and helps it conserve a little bit more water while still being able to photosynthesize. This plant is perfect for pollinators. I mean, back up here, look at those flowers, and it produces quite a bit of them, heavily visited and heavily used by our native pollinators. Can't love this plant enough, and it's a nice, iconic member of these prairie ecosystems. So not every member of this community is as big and robust as the prairie dock. Down here is one of the smaller members. And it's actually pretty neat that something so small and so delicate looking can survive in such a harsh habitat. This is the world milkwort. And as much as that sounds silly, it's a pretty robust little plant. It's not really big and its leaves have very little surface area, which very likely helps reduce evapotranspiration. In other words, it's helping conserve water. Another aspect is that it doesn't throw a lot of energy into sexual reproduction. These tiny white flowers don't get much showier than this. With a hand lens, you can definitely tell it's a milkwort, but it rarely opens its flowers wide enough to incur much of a pollination benefit. It is very likely that most of these populations are self-pollinating, and that might be of advantage in such a harsh habitat. If the plant continually clones itself, in other words, producing seeds that will grow into plants genetically identical to the parent, it ensures that the genes that helped it survive in that place are going to continue on into the next generation. And then every once in a while, something will pollinate one of these flowers and introduce just enough genetic diversity to keep this plant chugging away. It's an awesome little species. It's holding on quite hardy uh, despite its small size and a nice find if you know what to look for. I'd like to introduce you to one of my favorite grasses, side oats grandma. It's got that name because as you can see, the florets are arranged on one side of this long flowering stalk. 
You can find it pretty prolifically in habitats like this. It's a beautiful species and one really worth putting on a native landscape. You can't underestimate the power of grasses and as you can see this one is kind of forming the backbone of most of the floristic diversity in this area. It is a wonderful species and one I highly recommend getting to know a little bit better.